This is going to be a brief overview as to how to use FilterStorm Pro. For more information, there's a lot of text and video documentation on FilterStorm Pro's website. So here we have FilterStorm Pro's library. It maintains its own library separate from the iPad photo library. But we can import from the iPad library on the library tab and import button here. So here are all the albums I have in my iPad's library. I can either tap on one of these to import the entire album or I can double tap and select only the images I want and hit import like that. But let's just import an album here. So when you code import, it will import into whichever screen you're looking at. So I was looking at the library screen, so it created a new collection within the library. But if I were looking at a collection and I go and I import something, they will import as new photos within that collection. If I want to rename a collection, I can tap up here at the name. Or if I was in the library, I can tap and hold to bring up a popover to rename. Let's look at a larger collection now. So this one's quite a bit bigger. Um, you can scroll through here and find the images you're looking for over and over again. Or you can assign star ratings that you can then use to filter out the ones you like. I have a number selected here. Uh, if I wanted to set star ratings, I have a few options. I can do a two finger drag to set the star rating like this. I can select a couple images and bring the star pop over and use the rate button here to rate. And if I want some more detail before I rate, I can do a pinch open here to enter quick view and look at the different photos and rate only the one I like. So now that we've rated photos, let's filter out the ones that we liked. And I'm going to edit this image, which will be familiar to anyone who's used FilterStorm before and watched the old demo videos. Um, so I can crop like this. It will crop to whatever's within this rectangle. You can pinch and move to change what you want to uh, crop to. You can also set their standard uh, cropping ratios built in, or you can use the original images ratio. I'm going to cancel this. You could also enter in your own ratio up here. The real power of FilterStorm and FilterStorm Pro comes in its masking abilities. So if I take my curves here, and I'm going to use RGB, because I'm pulling it down and adjusting the sky, um, I can set my curves so that you know, I get the sky really nice and blue and the clouds really stand out like this. But if I do that, then you see I lose all the detail in the sky divers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to apply with mask and only apply it to a certain portion of the image. Now there's a few different masks I can use. Uh, there's a brush, which is normal. Uh, let me just erase that because I'm not going to use it. What I'm going to use in this case is a gradient. Now I have several types of gradients to use. I can use a linear gradient like this a circular gradient, uh, the opposite of that, inverse, where the center is not applied and the outside is applied. And there's two types of linear gradients, one where it's applied to the outsides and one where it's applied to the inside. I'm going to use the inverse circular gradient, though, because I want to keep, uh, I want to get the sky, but I don't really want to get the skydivers or the, uh, or the parachute. Let's go like that. It's fine. And now I'm just going to come here to the skydivers and I'm going to use my eraser to just erase the part that was applied onto them because I don't want to darken them. There we go, that's fine. Now I can do the same thing uh, just to bring out the contrast in the parachute. I'm going to use luminance curves this time. And I just want to make that, give it some nice contrast so it stands out. There we go. That's nice. Get this nice bright sun shining through effect here. Go to apply with mask. I'm going to use a brush this time. And I can just use my finger to paint it on. Like that. 
So we'll do one last thing to this image. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of spots on it. I had a really dirty sensor on my old D200 on this day. So I'm going to use the clone tool and just clone out those spots. And it uses a brush just like I was using before, except this time it's, whoops. Let's erase that with the finger slip. This time it's not brushing on an effect. It's taking a source point and copying it onto somewhere else on the image. There's a number of spots. It's a really dirty sensor that day. There we go. It was a quick job, but still helped. And there we have an edited image. Now if I hit this back button here, it will save the image. And I hope you can see it. There's now a double outline there showing that there are multiple versions of this image. So when I go double tap on it, I can see there's the original and final. You can have as many versions as you like. It'll keep saving them. And I can start editing from the original state, or I can start editing from the final state. So now if I wanted to send this image, uh, I can give it a name. Uh, let's just go here, call it demo image. You see the file name there. Uh, I can also set caption keywords and a bunch of other IPTC fields. And now I'm just going to go and email it. I could also email end FTP. You can send it to multiple places at once, but I'll just email it right now. And so we have a bunch of options here. We can scale it now, but I'll just go ahead and send. And it reprocesses it at full size in this case. Uh, if you have an iPad 2, it can go up to 22 megapixels. Um, if you have an iPad 1, it'll go up to 7.5 megapixels. And now we can just send an email. There we have it. Thanks for watching.